Hello and welcome to a brand new preview episode for Black on Black Cinema. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. All right, guys. Uh, this is preview for episode 179, Fatal Affair. Uh, look, you people have been talking about this movie. Uh, many people have asked us to please do this movie. Um, they watched it. Uh, they watched it on Quarantine Cinema. Yeah, that's right. There's uh, every, a every Friday. The folks in uh, the Black on Black Cinema fan page on Facebook get together and watch a movie uh, and talk about it. Yeah, and you should join the fan group, by the way, blackandblackcinema.com slash fans. Uh, they, they seem to have a very good time. I don't participate, and it's mostly because I don't I, – I want people to kind of like have their sort of insular conversations. Like I, I think it's actually kind of cool for us to not be in it, you know, like yeah, yeah. to kind of let the let, let people who are fans of the show um, – uh, kind of do what we do, basically, in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. Um, Especially in situations like this now that they've seen it. And, yeah, like, if if I were to be in that group and then we did this show, like, it would... It, it would repeat a lot of things. Yeah, it would be very different. Right. So... Yeah, yeah. I, I purposely did not get involved in this particular episode. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want... I don't want my... My virgin eyes ruined. <laughs> I want to be able to see this fresh. I don't know any. I haven't seen a trailer. I know Nia Long is in it. I know Omar Epps is in it. And I heard a rumor that uh, Nia Long's co-stars are make make an appearance. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> I, look, it's just a rumor. All right. Uh, well, I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Surprised if they do. I'm gonna find out, and it's also the the guy, the the light skinned guy from that last like silly thriller that we did. The husband was like, "I told you I didn't want want a kid or whatever." He was like the crazy bald light skinned dude, and he played oh, like, that dude. yeah, he looks like a villain. Yeah, he's in it too. Yeah, like like evil Joe Budden. Yeah, 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 evil Joe Budden. Yeah, which is probably like really Joe Budden. I don't know. Right. I, it's just shaved Joe Budden. Um, so. Yeah, so Fatal Affair. Now, the only – normally I would just say, like, that's the name of the movie, um, and that's – you know, we'll see you next week for that. But I, I thought I, w- I thought I would just quickly uh, mention this. So the director of this movie, uh, Peter Sullivan, also directed another movie for Netflix uh, called Secret Obsession. He has, like – that seems to be a theme with him, right? Um, and so I went down to look what the reception – was uh for that movie just to just to get an eye on and i don't know what the score is for fatal affair i really don't um but it says uh as far as the reception on rotten tomatoes the film holds an approval rating of 29 percent based on 17 reviews with an average of 2.84 out of 10 the website's critical consensus reads quote while it may offer some thrills in unintentional laughs secret obsession is mostly a formulaic and dumb thriller so (laughs) i mean that's probably what we're in for, uh, if I had a guess. I've seen the trailer. That seems about right to me. Um, so I can't wait. So I can't wait. So if this guy's track record is uh, any indication, um, this should be good. This should be entertaining is what I should say. Um, Netflix Netflix, and, and this quarantine have been a haven for schlocky film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've gotten a couple of good ones, but a lot of schlock. A lot of, a lot of just B and C level schlock. And I'm, you know, I'm partially okay with that because sometimes you just want to watch a bunch of garbage on TV. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, I don't need to use my brain. Give me, give me the secret obsessions guy. That's what I want. Um, all right. So from there, um, random topic of the week. So this is an interesting one. Um, no, we're not going to talk about Nick Cannon or Kanye West. Um, cause both of them need help and or, both need help. Just both need help. Um, so I, I, I thought uh, Micah suggested this, and this is a, a pretty good one to talk about. So for a while there, there, there was a time like I used to only post I, – I, I posted on Facebook 
like pictures of my my daughter that that uh, my wife and I adopted uh, probably a year ago, and then I had to take those down, um, and then I didn't post anything, any pictures of my daughter for a year, um, because we were going through uh, the adoption process, right? Like we thought we could put them up, we had to take them down, whatever. So can't put them up until that's all like done. Um, and I just didn't talk. I mean, I talked about that. I have a daughter, but I, I didn't really do too much mentioning. Right. So this is like, I'm just going to kind of give people the overall story of this adoption, which is crazy. Um, so it's, I mean, this secretly is uh, my idea for my first screenplay for an actual movie <laughs> like, because it's that, it's that bonkers. Um, so Micah, you, Golden you know, part two, what's that? This is the Golden Child Part Two. It's a vastly different movie. <laughs> well, um, incidentally, Golden, Child, Golden Baby is what my my father in law used to call her uh, when she was uh, when she was little. Um, so, so how this how this will work? Micah knows the entire story, and there's just there. Boy, there are a lot of twists and turns in this adoption story. <laughs> it gets a little crazy. I will leave out uh, certain names for. Um, for the sake of just like privacy. Do you, do you want me to leave out certain names? Yes, I would also appreciate oh. if you didn't say people's names. <laughs> I figured I would ask up front. Yeah. Yeah, because you you throw people's first them. and last names up there. You don't give a fuck. Um no, so I, I won't say that. Um I'll just refer to them as as their roles in this situation. Um so so what happened initially is like my wife and I tried to have kids for a number of years. We couldn't, right? Um and we had resigned ourselves to being uh, dinks, right? Dual income, no kids. <laughs> so we were just like fucking living it up. <laughs> Give a fuck. Oh, dude. Oh, so stupid. What's that? So that term is just so stupid. It, it is. It is. I mean, at one point when you know, we did uh, IVF and we, we, we were successful and then we, we lost, lost a kid, which was really um, uh, quite heartbreaking. But um, – we were like so screwed up after that. Like you go through like sort of like weirdness, right? You get really sad and then you like weirdly optimistic. Go, oh, we, we can try again. And, and then you like weirdly go, you accept it. And then you go, fine. We're just going to do whatever we want. Right. Like, yeah. like we almost bought a Porsche like one night. Like <laughs> it's so stupid. Like we were like looking online, like, oh, maybe we should just buy a Porsche. Fucking, like, who cares? We don't have kids anymore. You know, we don't have kids. And we just like woke up the next day, we're like, what are we doing? <laughs> this is a bad idea. Yeah, so you, you almost bought a Porsche and ended up buying a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But that's years later. But that was that was the mom mobile. We bought that. Yeah, that, that was years. That later. was the family. To be car. fair. Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> um, but we were this. We were this close to buying a Porsche too. It was a Carrera. God, it was fucking nice. Anyway, um. So we – by the way, we were sharing a car. How stupid is that? We should share a board. You can't even get groceries in there. So this is how dumb we were. So years later, um, just like you had already – your son had been born uh, five months beforehand, um, yeah. give or take. And so my wife uh, works in education. I'll just say that. And um, – Somebody who worked for her, a young guy, like 25, just like came back from like a weekend and was like, boy, do I have a story to tell you. This is crazy. And he proceeds to say that he found out that his, I guess his, his god sister, I guess you would refer to her as, um, had a kid. And uh, she's, um, she has issues with drugs. I'll just, I'll leave it there. And, um, so that kid was born, uh, like in a different state and, um, he, he, his, his mother and the biological mother's mother. So her, you know, the child's grandmother, my, my daughter's biological granddaughter went down to the state and got this kid, um, because the woman who had the kid left the, the kid in the hospital just abandoned right because drugs um strike one um then and there's more to that story but i won't even get into how nutty that gets but so 
he had been – they had just saddled him with the child for a couple of days. And he's 25 in grad school. Like uh, what am I supposed to do with a 12-day-old child, right? I'm 25 yeah. and I don't know he's what like, the fuck I'm doing. He's like, guys, I'm a sink. <laughs> sink like a come child on. now. <laughs> huh? Yeah, this guy's got like a girlfriend. Like, what the fuck? Like, all of a sudden, you're going to be like somebody's dad? Like, that's crazy. And he's also 25. Like, he's not ready right. for that. Right? He's just not ready for it. Um, I mean, like, there are 25-year-olds, obviously, who have kids. But, like, he was not prepared for this, right? Yeah, he just he specifically was not ready for this. Right. I, I'm just trying not to insult anybody who has – yeah, my mom was 24 when she had me, so relax. Um, so then – um. So my wife is like, oh, okay, like, and he's like, oh, you know, I don't know what to do and all that stuff. So my wife is like a really, just a, a really nice person. She's like, look, I'm going to send an email out to everybody uh, at the place I work and, you know, hopefully I'll, you know, hopefully people have stuff that they can bring you, right? And so she does. And then a bunch of people just are like, oh my God, you know, here's like pack and plays and fucking strollers and all that. just. Just, you know, parents who just have a bunch of stuff that they want to get rid of, right? Tons of stuff. He, he gets, you know, a bunch of clothes and things like that. Really lovely sort of community-based thing. Um, he then plans to come and get the stuff uh, from my wife on like a Friday or something like that or Saturday, right? So they meet up in, in so he can get the stuff. Um, and she meets the baby because he brings the baby along with it. And she has – she, she basically was like when she held this kid, like things changed dramatically. Now this is – at this point, it would be like seven years since we had – since we had tried to have kids. Um, so she's like it didn't feel like anything else, like period. Um, mm -hmm. So it was very new for her um, or very different I should say. And um, – he had – he had said that they are trying to find someone to actually adopt the child Um you know, like a loving family that would adopt a child that they knew so that they could stay in the kid's life. So my wife comes home. I was supposed to record a podcast that day. I was at home. Um, and she comes, she comes to talk to me and she's like, Hey, so I, I uh, met the baby today and I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> right. Cause she had told me the story of like this, this child being abandoned and everything. Right. And, ironically like i had been also thinking about it i was like i wonder it's like what are they gonna do with this kid like is somebody gonna adopt this kid like we could adopt this kid right like that's what i was thinking but i never said anything to my wife um and so she says you know she tells me like felt different than anything else that's ever happened uh with any other child um and she was like what do you think about like talking to them about adoption i was like well turns out i was also actually thinking this which is just kind of funny um and so we like called him and said, Hey, you know, we are interested in adopting this child. And very quickly, um, we met, I hadn't met the child at this point, right? I don't know what this child looks like. I don't know if this child is like Asian and, you know, Cree. As far as I'm concerned, this child could be blue. I have no idea. Um, which is just, you know, hilarious. She's met him, but I didn't even, ha I hadn't seen pictures. I hadn't seen anything, right? Um, and so very quickly, like a few days later, uh, we, we had the, that guy's mom who was then taking care of the child. Um, so the child's godmother, um, come to our house with the baby and she, first thing she said to us, which was interesting besides hello, and this will be very relevant later on in the story, which was, um, I hope you guys want her. Because if I if you don't want her, I have to take her, and I don't want her. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's a direct quote. That's a direct quote. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. dude! Yo, what the yo? All right, yo. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. Yeah, so that's more that's relevant for the uh, the rest of the story. <laughs> so, um, so that happened, and like, look, I'm 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 a I'm a, I'm a man. I'm a real ass dude. I held that baby, dude. It was like, there was something different, right? Like it just was like, I, like my mom, my mom was there. Um, because my mom, when I, I, we, my, my wife and I both asked my mom, like, can you just be there with us? Like through this so you can, you know, 
see the, you know, check out the situation. And of course, you know, we, look, we told my mom on the phone drive, like we were driving down to my in-laws house and we called my mom and told that, told her the story about us being interested in adopting this baby. And it was total fucking silence for my mom. And I said, mom, are you crying? And she was like, yes, I'm crying. <laughs> because she's been waiting. She, she had still been sort of holding that candle that we would have kids, right? Like even eight years later. Um, and, and there's some other stuff to that that I'll get to, which is also interesting on my wife's side. Um, so, so that happens and my mom meets the baby and, you know, my mom is like over the moon as well. Right. Um, incidentally, and I don't believe in like superstitions and things like that. I'm just, I'm just not that guy, but I, I do think there's sometimes there are just interesting things that happen in the universe. The same day that my daughter was born, uh, is the same day that my mother-in-law who had been fighting cancer for many, many years, um, who my wife and I rushed up our, our marriage for, she was like, because she was having major surgery and she might've died. This was, you know, 10 years ago. Um, she said that, you know, to quote to us, I will stay around until you guys have your little swirl baby is what she said to us. Right. <laughs> she, that's what she said. Right. Fucking hilarious to me. Right. Uh, we're like, okay. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's happening, Judy. Sorry. To the day that my daughter was born, Judy actually fell and and hit her head because um, she was just weak from cancer. She fell and hit her head, and she was never the same. Like, and she died um, a little, you know, a little time after that. She died literally the end of the weekend that she got to meet her for the first time. Like that, like I don't know, like karma, whatever, or fucking universe, it's called God, shit. <laughs> whatever, Zenu. I don't know, man. But that, like it, it even warms the cockles of my dead, cold atheist heart. Um, that that is, they were so tied, right? Like in, in that way, yeah. which is kind of kind of beautiful. And like I'm glad she got to meet her and hold her, um, like literally. She went to the hospital that weekend at the end of that weekend, and then you know it just deteriorated after that. So it was yeah. the like cognitively she she did get to meet her beforehand, which was great. Um, so we had the meeting with uh, this this godmother, the I don't I don't want her lady, um, and it went really well. <laughs> yeah, not a fan. Um, oh, um, it went really well, and so. We were told that the grandmother, who was on vacation, didn't come back from vacation to get her child or grandchild, but whatever. Um, we were told that she may be a little, she may be a little leery about the adoption, right? Because she's taking care of the biological spouse's other child because drugs. And, uh, we were like, okay. Like, y'all ain't talking over with her? <laughs> like, before meeting with us? No, 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 everything will be fine. But we'll just have to talk to her. It's like, okay. So, they're like, well, what do you guys want to do as far as, like, how do you guys want to play this? And we're just like, I'm, bitch, I don't know. What the fuck? Like, sorry, I've never, I've never done a private adoption. I, I don't know. So, what we agreed on is that, uh, that next weekend, they would bring the baby by and she would stay with us for an extended weekend, right? Like from like Friday all the way to like Tuesday or some shit like that. Uh, one, boy, was that first night really hard. Um, that was crazy. It was super crazy. Like we were like, we, we bought all this stuff, didn't have like shit together. Um, we're in the middle of the night trying to open a package of diapers because we didn't set the shit up. Like, like we're kind of like a little mad at each other at like three in the morning. It was just nuts. It was so stupid. But like by the second or third day, like we had it. We we're like, okay, I, I think we could do this. I think we could do. Well, that. like you said, like you told me uh, when you, you know, when this first happened, you know, you guys didn't have that nine month on ramp to kind of get ready. <laughs> Nigga, we had a nine, <laughs> like not nine days. <laughs> it's like nineteen <laughs> right. hours. Like you had to, like you had to go from zero to sixty. Like yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like we really did. So, um, 
that was that was a little crazy. Um, I did call you, which was which was cool. Like you were like outside of like direct family. You were the first person I called. Um, yeah, and I I I, uh, I remember that call because uh, I was talking about my wife, and we both had the same idea. It was like, why don't they just adopt a baby? You know, and we yeah. said it like, oh, pfft, yeah, why don't they just adopt a baby? Right? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, oh, it's nothing. Yeah. Just, just go adopt a baby. <laughs> oh, if you could see our lawyer fees now. <laughs> 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 Holy <laughs> shit. My wife's brother's adopted. She's like, yeah, just adopt a baby. Hey, just grab one from a mall. What, <laughs> whatever. What's the big yeah. deal? Be like, you know what? I'll, I'll take this one. <laughs> yeah, you just like a, like a Coke. You just go to a vending machine and you just like, right. what does this one look like? Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I feel like that one's all right. Yeah, yeah, bad eyesight. No, it's fine. I don't need a receipt. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't need a receipt. You gonna return this? Bag? No. No. How much is the bag? Five cents. I don't need a bag. <laughs> I'll just carry it out. <laughs> exactly. These new Jordans. I'm wearing these shits out. <laughs> right. Like it's kind of like that. Um. So. Uh, so okay. So then we agree. Like the, to the long weekend. Right. We do the long weekend. We totally fall in love with this baby. Right. Amazing. Um. And we're like, yeah, we tell them like, yes, like full steam ahead. We are cool. Let's, let's rock and roll. Immediately after that weekend, my wife and I, who are very, you know, adults and smart, um, we get a lawyer, right? Like, cause this is what you're supposed to do. You got to get your fucking, your, you know, your, 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 your eyes dotted and your, uh, your T's crossed, so to speak. And, um, so we're like, all right, cool. Go to a lawyer who specializes in uh, adoptions, they're like, sounds like a great story, lovely, wonderful, blah, blah, blah. All right, here are the things that you need to do. So we're like, all right, cool. We're good. All right, bring, bring the information to them. Hey, we're going to need you to sign these documents. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, word, 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 word. So, uh, uh, you know, sign them? Or, uh, uh, yeah, 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 word, 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 word. Yeah, you're right. Show you're right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no, no, no signing of documents. Um, a lot of obfuscating and, and sliding around on a bullshit. How long, how long was this that they were just kind of holding on to these documents? So it was, it's a little hard to say because it's, it's not all just like, just signed documents as much as it was like, all right, we're going to sit down and like, meet with a lawyer to have agreement and conversation. So that went on for a little bit of time, like three months. Right. And the, the problem with all of this is, and you have to, you have to write, you have to understand this in order to like truly get the entire story, which is the longer that you have the child, the larger the barrel by which you are over grows in size. Right. Because you're not just going to walk away because it's your kid. Right. Um, or uh, how you see it as, as your kid. Um, and so in that time, we, we met the grandmother for the first time who literally walked in the door of our house and said, hi, mom and dad. And said, oh, what's the child's name? Uh, so I'm thinking, cause this is what we were worried about. Like she gonna come in and be like, nah, nigga. Like, like that's what I thought. And it was the exact opposite, which was like a massive relief for us. We were like, oh, oh okay. Like everything is coming up Millhouse. Right. This is awesome. Gram- grandma's on board. Right. Everybody's on board. I don't want a ladies on board. Grandma's on board. <laughs> we're good. At this point, we've gone through the long weekend and the grandma's like, look, here's what I want. I want to have some time with her. Before we start all this and we're like, okay, we, you know, reluctantly say like, okay, like obviously we don't want to do that, but you know, we understand, like we got to respect that. And she was like, I said, you know, we both were like, you know, not trying to be rude, but like, how long is long? Like how much time? Right. Um, keep in mind, she's a month old at this point. Right. Um, and she was like, I don't know, a couple days, maybe a week. We're like, <sighs> Okay, all right. And so in that moment, she took the child with her um, back to her house. And my wife was a mess, understandably. And this is this, this is a very, uh, I would presume, a scary feeling. 
it's a very scary feeling because you've become attached to this kid. And it hasn't been that long. I mean, but it doesn't take long. How long did it take you to get attached to your kid? Eight seconds? Seconds. <laughs> right, exactly. And now somebody would be like, let me go ahead and take this kid for a week. And you're like, uh, all right, no, but seriously, what? how long? 45 minutes, right? Um, so, which is weird. So after seven days, um, she called and she was like, okay, like you can come get your daughter now. And, I'm, and we're just like, cause she lives in a different state. We're just like, we're on our way. Um, drove our asses up there and, and sat down with her and, and, and she was like, yeah, you know, we're going to need to sit down with the lawyer. Um, you know, get all this, you know, stuff straight. And, and when you, you know, with adoption, because she had, she actually adopted the, the, the birth mom. Right. Um, and she was like, you know, this is how it works. And, you know, you have to stand in front of the judge and, you know, we'll stand all together and vouch for everybody. And, you know, it'll be a lovely thing. We're like, okay, we've never adopted anybody. So we'll take your word for it. And so we take the baby back home and, um, we're just, we're just living just like straight up like family. It's great. Everything's awesome. She's a month. She's two months. She's three months. She's four months. She's five months. Um, and every month or so we're like, so, um, so in the process of adoption, you have to go through like custody, like formal custody and then adoption. Formal custody is an adoption full cost full custody and full adoption are basically the same process um they go a little bit deeper on uh, on adoption for obvious reasons um so we're like okay we want to start the adoption process and we get told well um we want to be respectful to the birth mother so we're going to try to talk to her and make sure she's on board with that she Abandon the child, my nigga. Like that don't make sense. That don't make no sense. That don't make no kind of sense. You wanna you wanna talk to the drug addict to make sure that the drug addict is okay with raising a baby? The drug addict? Right. And I'm look, I don't want to shit on you know, Right. Like, I, like I'm not even trying to like fancy. do that. Right. Right. I, it just I don't make sense because right. of her status. Logically, logically it doesn't make sense. Right. She's out of her mind. Right, given that the the mother gave the baby up at birth, right, they didn't take her; she right. left the kid, um, and had not been heard from since. They tried to contact her, by the way, had not heard from her. So, uh, fast forward, um, that happens. Like we keep kind of getting blown off. Oh, the, you guys are being too pushy. You guys are you just relax, just relax, just relax. Okay, six months gets there, and we're like again the barrel by which we are over is enormous. Donkey Kong is jealous of this, of said barrel, right? This is that big. Um, and there's no turning back for us. There's no just walking away. Like, like that's not, that's not what parents would do. Um, and she's very much our child at that point. Um, so, and we've named her, right? They gave her a name when they picked her up. I didn't really like that name. It's not not a fan. Um, will you will you you don't have to say the name. You can text me the name. I don't I don't know the name. Oh, you don't know the name? No. I thought I told you. At one point, we had um, we had agreed that it would be the um, it would be the middle name, right? At, out of respect for them. Um, again, we were we were trying to be very. Uh, <laughs> I almost spelled that wrong. That's funny. Um, so. Oh. Yeah, see, not a fan. Like, does that sound like a, a name we would name our kid? No, <laughs> no, no, <not laughs> no. It all. does not, <laughs> right? Not at all. Um, so, so then basically, um, we keep getting blown off, right? Like, oh, kind of respect, right? And we know that they're going through the process that the godmother, not the grandmother, just keep that in mind. The godmother would have like emergency custody, right? Because she's one of the people who went down to get her initially. So they want to just make sure like legally kids in the state, everything is cool. Got no problem with that. That's how it works. It's fine. But we're like, okay, let's move into the custody and adoption part. Cause what the fuck are we waiting on? Um, again, we need to be respectful to the mom. Doesn't really make sense. So then we find out this is where things go. 
they start to go off the rails. This is like six months. Things start to go off the rails because we find out that they were trying to get full custody behind our backs. And so if they had, if that had happened, they, they had signed up for like government services, which both my wife and I are like, she doesn't need that. Like we make perfectly fine money. We don't, we don't need to take money from the government to raise a child. We're fine. And that's not a, by the way, that's not an indictment on anyone who does. I'm just saying, why do we like, we don't need to take advantage of a system. Like we don't need it. It's, it's for people who need it and that's okay. Um, but what it was, was they were getting money. So like probably a lot of money. And when you do that, you get that money because you are taking care of the child, but they weren't taking care of the child. We were taking care of the child full time. It wasn't a shared every other weekend thing full time. So we would always send pictures. My wife mostly, um, would send pictures to them like in texts, like, Hey, here's a new picture of the baby. Like every couple of days, right? Like, cause she's super excited to take pictures of the baby and everything and share like you would with any other grandmother, like my mom. Um, and they just wouldn't respond. Um, they set up, we had got, um, uh, pediatric, uh, uh, a pediatrician. Um, and because the baby hadn't been seen since she was born until we got her because they refused to take, they didn't want to spend the money. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> These two just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, this is, this is real, this is real life. This is real ass life. And so we got a pediatrician, uh, highly recommended, um, got a pediatrician for the kid and, um, they had us bring our daughter to, uh, to them so that they could take her to a WIC doctor so that they could pretend like they were taking care of the child so that they could get like free services and shit, like free money and shit, right? All on the government teat. Um, which again, the barrel by which we are over is enormous. So we can't just be like, nah, fuck y'all. Cause they could just legally, they could just be like, yoink. And this shit's over. Right. And then we, then I got to go crazy and I don't want to go crazy cause I'm a nice person. Um, so then, um, so the responses to the images just stop after we're like, we need social security number for the doctor. And you know, cause that's what doctors need. They were like, what kind of doctor needs your social security number? I was like, what kind of doctor doesn't want your social security number? What the fuck? <laughs> what kind of, what kind of gym joint are y'all going to? <laughs> what doctors do you go to? Dude, they don't even need insurance. They just take cash under the table. Like, all right. <laughs> okay. Right. We were taking her to a doctor. Yeah. A mob doctor you going to. Right. He only removes bullets. Like, what the fuck? That's the only thing I know how to do. So, um, so the responses to the, to the messages stop. And then we find out through, uh, Maryland case search, um, which is great, by the way. You should use it. Um, if you have any questions about anybody, um, that, there is a court case coming up and it was a custody case for this child behind our backs, making the barrel potentially that much larger. Um, so we hired at this point, we have two lawyers, then a third lawyer, <laughs> black lady lawyer, a badass. Um, this woman was dope. She was super cool. Um, she came in, she was like, she met with us. It's really expensive, like really expensive. You know, your wife, you know, she is a part of a, a cadre of horrible people, which are people who bill people out of tons of money being a lawyer. But she doesn't, she's not a, she's not like a in-court lawyer. No, she's not like a litigator. Like oh she, my God, dude. They, yeah, they, she, they must she, make she so did that much for, money. She did that for a minute and then was like, yo, my conscience is wearing on me. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's this. the thing. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was fun. So we hired her. Um, and she was like, yeah, um, I suggest you guys intervene. And we're like, look, we, that was a hard decision for us, right? Because if we intervene, that's it. That's it. Ain't no coming back from this. This is, this is, 
shit gets blown up, right? Like feelings get hurt and like people don't, people don't recover from shit like that. Like relationships don't recover from shit. So we're like, okay, so what are our options? Like you intervene or you don't intervene and try to go later, but that, but then legally you're in a worse position, right? Because there's nothing legally indicating that we have ever been involved in this child's life at all. So we're like, okay, all right, let's blow it up. So, well, we tried to call them and we're like, so um, we noticed you had a court case on Friday coming up. The fuck? <laughs> like, basically. And they refused to talk to us. The grandmother called on Wednesday night. And was like, I'm too busy to talk to y'all right now. I was like, but you called us. The fuck? <laughs> like, that doesn't... You're not busy. You're not, we're like, but can we talk right now? She was like, no, nah, I'm too busy right now. I'm like... Nah, nah, let me call you up to tell you to stop calling my house. <laughs> right, right, right. Stop playing on my phone. I'm like, all right. You know what? You got it. And I said, well, can you tell the godmother? Like, we really need to talk to her before Friday. Because that was, that was us saying, like, you don't call us by Friday... Like, shit's about to be lit, nigga. Like, yeah, ju- just so you know. Yeah. Just I so mean, you, you know. Are, you all are incredibly not. I, no. We, we, me and my wife were talking about that. We wouldn't have gave him that warning. Like, you want to go? Well, we will go. Oh, no, no, no. You Look, you, sometimes it's better to get people all the rope to hang themselves right. as possible. And that, was a ju- that was And that was a just, I, I remember that's what you told us. And yeah. I'm like, Right. You got you got to give people you got to give people a chance, right? I knew they were gonna fuck it up. I knew <laughs> that they were gonna fuck. It. Of course, of course, right? Um, and this is the part of the story where I would I would stress this to people who are not married. Know the people that you marry. Like really know them, because it's important. Because know the person that you're married that they can they can pick up where you can't in a moment. And that you are willing to go like, you know, that saying like you go to war with the team that you have, like the, with, you go to war with the army you have. Yeah. Like, that's what a marriage really is. My nigga. Like, that's what it really is. Because like, you, you know, you see you see your partner in different ways, like in moments, you're like, hey, you, you see him accomplish something. You're like, yeah, go ahead, girl. I see, yeah, I see you. Or, you know, your wife's proud of you, something you do. Like, those are those are great moments. Right. But it's when that stress of like it's that moment in um, uh, Black as like Fuck. The, you remember that yeah. like where they're arguing, and then that 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 shitty uh, like snobby white couple says something about their kids, and it's like that united front comes on there like, oh no no, yeah. let's put our our bullshit aside for a second. Let's go fuck these two up together, right? You know what I mean? Like it's kind of that. And you need a you need a Connie from the man in three B who just rolls up and is like, I'm a ride or die, bitch. <laughs> right. And, 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 and will murder a dude for you. Right. So and like and, and but but and then take his chain. Right. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like that type of shit. So so there's no murder in this story. But I, I would just stress that it is very important to understand the person that you're married to. Um it, it, it because in, in moments that really matter, they show you who they are. Um so, case is Friday. My wife goes to work. I am at home that particular day. Like, oh, I because I normally, I'm trying to think before the pandemic. Um, I just leave later. So, I had my daughter, like, my wife left at 7. I have my daughter. I basically don't leave the house until, like, 8.30, right? So, I'm just home with her. And so, the case is on Friday. And we're kind of trying to decide what we're going to do, what we're going to do, what we're going to do. Get a call on Thursday morning to my phone um, is from the godmother that I don't want this kid, God, godmom. And she says, you know, I know y'all been looking on Maryland case search, da, 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 da. And she says all this stuff. It's very threatening. Like, it's very threatening. And it's like, if this is too much, you know, we could come and take the kid and all this other shit. And look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. That terrified the shit out of me. Cause I'm like, you, know, you try to come in this house. I want to end up being a nigga on the news, but like I might lose it. Like I might lose it. I don't know. And and also I'm like legitimately fucking scared, right? Like anybody who has a kid, you're legitimately scared that something will happen to them, right? Like that is a part of being an adult uh, and a parent. Um, 
And she was like, yo, we're, we're never going to give you guys custody. And I'm like, what the fuck are we doing right now? Like, <laughs> nigga, this is six, six months. We have had this kid for six months or she's six months old. So we've had her for five. Um, and so I, of course I called my wife and right after the phone call and I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. I was like, we can't like legally do anything because she's going to try to take the kid if we do. Right. And my wife was like, what did she say? She was like, nah, fuck that. She was like, and again, this is where I faltered and I was, I was afraid. Like I just was. And I will, I'll tell you that a hundred, a hundred times out of a hundred. I was afraid. My wife was like, no, fuck that. She was like, let's, she was like, I'm on my way home. And she came home and we got right on the phone with those lawyers. She was, and they were like, let's rock and roll. And, and we, the thing, the yeah. thing that you all need to know about Jay's wife is that Jay's wife is, is, uh, an incredibly nice person. Like, just yeah, deep to a fault. <laughs> to a fault. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't want to say it, but like, yeah, like to a fault sometimes. Yeah. You know, she's, she's very artsy and she is the optimist of, of the two of them, right? Oh, like, 100%. They are, they are, they are a perfect yin and yang. Uh, but like, don't mess with her kid, yo. Like, cause, cause she does nah. that. She turned into, she turned into that mother that will lift a car up to save her baby. Right. Yeah. Like, like yeah. it is, it is a, a form of aggression that very rarely do you see out of Jay's wife. Yeah. Uh, like, it's amazing. Yo, <laughs> she was like, nah, fuck that. Yo, she was like, tell me everything she said. <laughs> she was so, she was furious. Like she was furious and i'm like i'm like it's you need to, one of those things i'm like, like you need to calm down <laughs> it's one these. of those things where it's like it's like if you got a woman threatening you as a man you're a man right and you're not one of those type of like scumbag niggas that'll punch a woman right right but it's like well you're you're, you're, you're stuck do? yeah you're, you're stuck. stuck you just gotta take you just gotta take whatever blow she throws on you mm-hmm. and then you see your girl come in and it's like get your hands off my man and yeah. then she fucking beats yeah. the shit I I'm like so that. glad you're here <laughs> now beat her up um, right like that's that's kind of that's that's kind of part of it and so she just like she was like look I mean we talked about it and we are like look this is what we have to do right because we're, we're the, the barrel is too big right at this point and so we're like alright well let's go for it like fuck it so we call the lawyer the lawyer's like fucking rock and roll i'll see you in court 8 a.m tomorrow she don't know we're coming they don't know they they assume that phone call that was that was it surprise surprise nigga <laughs> we get there and because we black you know because i'm black my mom is there and my two aunts are there they ain't gonna miss this shit <laughs> right so they get there uh, I got the black delegation there. Um, and so it's, my, it's my wife, um, and, and my aunts and my mom, um, baby is, um, baby's with my uh, sister-in-law. And so we go, we go to court and we're walking in and we walk right by her and she looks us dead in the eye. Cause I saw her from a distance cause I pay attention more to my wife. Um, I saw her from a distance. I do. I try. It's a fact. Um, she ain't here, is she? Um, <laughs> but I, we walk right past her, and she and I and I bumped my wife, and I was like, "There she is!" Like, fucking, just relax, right? Um, and we just like deadpan, just fucking kept looking. And again, my wife, to her core, is a nice person. She's like, "Hey," I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Now is not the time for pleasantries. We're going to war, goddamn it. We're going to war. So we get so this is where it gets fucking crazy. We we get in the we finally get in the courthouse. There was like a delay. Da, 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 it doesn't matter. We get in the court. She walks, she case gets called, right? We just we just hit sitting in the back. Our lawyer, a lawyer gives her our fucking folder that's like this big of we printed out every we we screen grabbed every text message every image we sent to them 
like it like literally a printout. By the way, a program called iMazing is really good for that. Um, everything. Dates, everything. Right? Text messages where they're calling us her parents, all that shit. Just just fucking just snitching on everybody, right? We my our lawyer sits the the serving documents next to her because they tried to serve her overnight and they purposely didn't answer the door, right? As if that matters legally. <laughs> Stupid. Right. 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 <laughs> oh, well, if I don't know about it, like TV and movies got people fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> nigga, that's not how the law works. They try to serve you. If they don't serve you, they will get to you. Don't don't you worry, dum dum. So they um so she sits it down next to this woman. This woman, this is a courtroom, my nigga. Like, she was like, I don't want that shit. And it's like, bam, and like slams it against the thing. And I was like, oh, this is going to go well. <laughs> right? We're just sitting in the back. Judge calls her up. Judge is like, uh, it's like he's looking through the, the massive document, right? Because that got to him before the case. And he's like, uh, I remember this case. It's like, I remember you very vividly. Because you've got crazy. And uh, he's like, um, so. Uh, did you have the baby on X, Y, Z date? And like, keep in mind, this nigga's looking at pictures and text messages that we sent on those dates. <laughs> like, she, like, there's nothing to lie about here. You, you're caught. And she was like, well, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And he was like, you ain't never mentioned them before. And she's like, well, you know, we were, we were both taking care of the kid. He was like, were you? Like, you sure? Because it don't appear that that's true. Because you came up here and said that you had possession of this kid. Da, 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 da. And like there are dates that she went to court. And there are dates matching text messages that we're sending about this kid. Like on those dates. Like she was caught dead to rights. Like there was just no argument. She was saying, she then started saying, because my, my father-in-law is Indian, that we were trying to to steal the kid and 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 take the kid to India. Like. So wait, my father-in-law's plan was to come to America for 60 years, have kids and grandkids here, and then steal a, an American baby and take her back to India? What kind of fucking plan is that? Nigga, for 60 years? That's a long con, by the way. That's super crazy. That's, yeah, that, that, I mean, you're, you're de- your father-in-law is an incredibly smart man, but like, I don't think he's an evil genius. <laughs> like, <laughs> one day. No one will see this one coming. Wow, okay, that seems odd. Um... Also, that's kind of racist. They, kind of racist. <laughs> kind of. Jesus Christ. It's super racist. So that happened. She says that. Um, then she said we, we, we wouldn't give the child back, even though she legally had more rights to get the child than we did at that point. And, and, and for those. Oh, and who... the kid was going back and forth. So the kid was going back and forth and we wouldn't give the kid back. Those are two separate thoughts that came out of her mouth. Out of the person who said, I don't want this Thank baby. You. Thank you. Okay. All Thank right. You. I just Thank want to make sure. Grandmother's not there. We're all the on the same page. Just keep in mind, grandma's not there. Right? I mean, in fairness, they didn't know that, that, that this was coming. Right? So the judge is like, uh, no to all of this. This is all bullshit. Um, you no longer have any custody. Knock it off. Um. And so through some like rigmarole or the court case, we retain custody. We had the child. We retain the child. She's walking out of the courtroom. It's like TV. She literally turns to us and screams, you are rotten people. You didn't have to do this. And she has to be es- escorted out, es- escorted out by the bailiff. <laughs> not a, I'm not lying. It's 100% true. Um, uh, it was so wild that when I called you, my wife and I called you from the car when we were leaving, you were like, wait, what? <laughs> like you couldn't even believe it. It's absolutely bonkers, dude. That story is so crazy. Um, but that's not even close to the end. Well, I'll speed it up just for time. Um, so we then we get back, we, we stay at my sister-in-law's house, uh, with the baby for, for like two days. Um, then we go back home and we're home for like, at that point, we had been gone, I think, total of almost four days, like three, three or four days. And then we come back home. And um, within two hours, the police show up. So they clearly were stalking our house to see when we got home. Yeah. Um, so the police show up. 
uh, two cops, a uh, Latin cop and a white cop, um, uh, come in. We're, 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 we're in our house. Baby's having fun. Dog is chilling. We're listening to fucking jazz, drinking Prosecco because we won the case and they did. Right. Cop comes in. I'm immediately very nervous because I'm a black man in America. Right. Shit Oops. doesn't, shit doesn't feel good to me. Don't like it. Not a big fan of it. They're outside in their cars. Right. And they call fucking child protective services. Child protective services is like, oh, word, what happened? Yeah, no, they don't have to give up the kid. Fuck out of here. Like, that's not how this works. Um, and they were, the cops were like, well, they want to talk. Do you guys want to talk with them? We're like, no, no, fuck them. <laughs> Go home. Fuck off. Um, then, uh, we did a restraining order and blah, blah, blah. That, that didn't really take. But, um, so then, um, basically what happened then is we just waited until, at that point, it was close to a year that we that she was close to a year old, um, and so we finished up the process of the adoption, and it's done. Now, the last part of this is super interesting, right? We hired, um, what do they call a uh, private investigator, right? You have to try to track down the mother, like that's a part of or the parents. You have to do that. We could never find them, right? We knew what city they were in, could never find them. Um, it's a whole process. Then we get a letter to our lawyer that says, hey, purporting to be the mom, um, hey, uh, you, um, you have my kid, you stole, you know, you, they stole my kid, uh, which is not true. Um, give the kid to the, the, uh, the I don't want the kid lady, ironic. Um, and, uh, while I'm getting my life together. Oh, okay. So, so you're advocating to not take care of your own child, but to give the child to, got it, got it, cool. Right. By the way, your other child is with a different person, but okay, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> right, right. That's fine. Uh, one, I don't believe you. I don't believe that this is from you. Like, I think you're lying. Um, it's a typed letter. Um, and as we all know, um, that's a surefire way to know someone's probably bullshitting you. Um, oh yeah, I typed this. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> it's not not it's not notarized or anything, right? That you sent to our lawyer. To our lawyer that you didn't notarize. All right, sure. Um, <laughs> immediately ignore. Our lawyer was like, I, I don't, our lawyer was like, I don't even believe this is real. <laughs> I mean, this shit might have been, it could have been just written in crayon for, for fuck's sake. For all I care. Right. <laughs> Stupid. But so incidentally, it was like when you send a letter, they postmark it from the state by which you sent it. Right? Do people understand how, law, how the law and how the mail works? Right? This is very relevant. So the letter was postmarked from a, a, one state with a return address for a different state, from the state that we were told was where she lived. So we had to go check out that address too, right? Just to make sure we had all our ducks in a row as you're going through the process. You have to. And it's really scary, right? Because it's like... What if they do find her there? And she's like, no. And then we got to fight it fucking, you know, like this whole case, right? Private investigator goes to the house. Asked person who was like looking for this person. They were like, um, that person don't live here. And this is during quarantine. And so everybody who lives in the house was there. And they proceeded to ask every single person. They were like, not only does this person not live here, we've been living here for 14 years and we've never even heard this name before. So they just picked a random address. Um, so no, that wasn't true. And we had checked like three other places and they, they weren't places that she was either. Um, again, because drugs, why would she be in one place? Right? Like, I mean, it's an addiction, so she tends to probably move around. Um, so yeah, then the, then the quarantine happened and where we would have had this resolved months ago, we had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then it finally was completed. Literally exactly the day, one year to the day that we got her the first time. June 28th to June 28th. Exactly to the day. That is, uh, that is a hell of a, that is a hell of a year. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my finances. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. But I, I love, I love, uh, I love that story. 
Uh, it's a good story because yeah, it is. It is. And, uh, and no, we have not heard from them by the way. Of course, not. nothing, they nothing. Didn't the they didn't want the babe. Right. <laughs> she literally said that you, you, you blew up her scam and you're yeah. rotten for it. And, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> right. And now this beautiful baby, uh, has loving parents. This baby yeah. who, by the way, I mean, everything like, like everything about this story and this child is like the definition of serendipity, right? Like yeah, that is. you found a, you found a, a baby that looks like both of you. Yeah, it's weird, right? It like it's very odd that you found a baby that looks like both of you. Um, especially given that you are an interracial couple and like, yeah. you know, and she's, and she's, she's half black, half white. Right. I mean, she, my wife and I are not, black and white but like my wife is like kind of shakes out to being like puerto rican <laughs> like that's kind of what she looks yeah. like <laughs> more or less <laughs> but uh yeah man it, this is uh this is this is a wonderful story will will you uh tell your daughter this story whenever you feel the time is right or um, is it something that you just kind of some, some very vari- variation on that. I'm sure probably not going into gruesome detail that, that that's yeah. my guess. I probably not. Yeah. yeah you, you don't need May- to. maybe when she's older, but I look when she's a grown up, then you can be like, look, these bitches had the cops over here. Tried to get your daddy arrested and shit. Yeah. Like, uh, or yeah, shot. You could spare her from that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or murder or like, murder. Yeah. Right, which really pissed me off because it could have gotten her hurt too. Yeah, it's, it's get real. I mean, it's a fact. Um, no, nah, it's yeah. So it's it's a harrowing story, um, as you would say, and I agree with you. Uh, my wife and I are incapable of doing anything straightforward. <laughs> it, it, we nothing comes easy for us. It's always a fucking hell of a process, always. Um, but it's dope. Um. Cause she's a dope ass kid and she's resilient and she's, and she's bright. And even though, you know, she was born into craziness, she's had no issues. Um, uh, like she's cognitively like super fucking bright. She already knows the letter a, which is pretty impressive. Um, um, she's dope. She's a, she's a dope little kid. She's, she's smart. She's funny. She's, fucking adventurous as hell She's always climbing on shit um and as my wife says which i think is the the best uh best way to describe her is she's resilient through all the shit she's resilient and she doesn't know like all the other shit you know like yeah. that her parents have gone through to fight for her um yeah i mean there's no i i, I don't hesitate in saying that there's nothing i wouldn't do for her that my wife and i would would go through hell, hell and high water. And we did, we'd do it again. Um, so it's, it's a, it is a harrowing story and there's some details I'm leaving out just for time. But I mean, there's a lot of shit we had to do. Like me being questioned by a lawyer in court saying, you know, you're not, you know, what was the problem with having cops at your house? And me literally, this is my one moment of like legal defiance. I was pretty proud of it. He was like, cause I was, I was like, look, you called the police to my house. You could have called us by the way. You could have called us and you didn't. Right. You said you to talk. Yeah. You could have called us like that. Right. We could have had a conversation. Um, and you didn't. And also you were sneaking behind our backs to begin with. Um, but I said, yeah. And you called the police to our house, which, I said, I live in Baltimore City, and I'm in front of a black judge with a white lawyer on their side. And I said, you know, I live in Baltimore City, and I'm a black man. You know, like, this is not, this is not a game. And he was like, well, you know, and he, he, you know, he knew what he was saying on purpose to try to, of course. Tr- to try to push me into a corner to make me seem irrational. And he, and he was like, um, you know, why, you know, they, they went to the cops. Why would you? You're not afraid of police, are you? And I literally, and I counted in my head. I literally stared at him for 20 fucking seconds and didn't say anything. And then I said, I don't know what would happen. And you could, you could feel that black judge being like, I mean, <laughs> like, what do you want me to say to you, dude? You want me to get real, real? I can't get real, real here. Cause then I look like a crazy person. I had a fucking beautiful beard. I had to shave off for court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't look fucking threatening, which sucked. 
beer was fucking dope. It looked good. And I had to grow this shit from scratch again. Yeah, one day I sent you and Terrence a picture. I was like, here it is, right before court. And Terrence was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I look like a 12-year-old again. This is the worst. Um, but yeah, there is there are some details I, I've left out. But she's a dope kid, man. She is. And um, I don't know. Like, I just there there have been things that have happened over the course of this year that have just been bizarre. Like just bizarre as in like circumstantially just crazy um that raising a kid like in quarantine and things like that have been wild but and i will and i will say this i i often joke about like saying something nice about michael or terrence like ah i hate doing it um but no you guys are you guys heard pretty much all of it right and like you guys have always been supportive really supportive and stuff like that and and the other folks in the network have as well um, which has been really awesome. But I will say this because you and I are best friends and we have been for a very long time. Um, one of the things that always pained me is that thought because you and I are the same age that we weren't, we weren't going to be able to raise kids together. Like as like, yeah. you know, side by side, um, that always like bothered me to my core. Um, and then when that hat, when this happened, um, when so, and again, this wasn't an opportunity like we sought out. Like it just fucking literally yeah, fell in our laps. Just happened. Um, that was like that was a pretty that that was like a really nice thing to think about. And then, like, for you and your wife and your son to be like at her first birthday, even though it was fucking during quarantine and everyone was like socially distanced in my family, but you guys were there because you are family. Um, that was awesome. Like that that felt really good. And and to kind of know that that's all on the right track now is really fucking great. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I, uh, I'm very happy for you too. Um, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna do this parent thing. Uh, you're gonna knock it out of the park. And, um, I, uh, I, I, I look forward to, um, I look forward to our, our kids kind of growing up, especially cause you know, I'm going to need somebody to, to, to <laughs> complain about. <laughs> right. To bounce it off of. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. And bounce stuff off of because right. like we're 40 <laughs> and we have one year olds. So. Yeah. We're old now. We're old dads. <laughs> yeah, we're fucking we're old dads. technically older fathers. So, yeah. um, but yeah, it's going to be fun, man. It's, it's going to be super fun. I can't wait for your daughter to be, um, to get into the stage that my son is in where he just, he's just a drama king and he just throws himself on the floor <laughs> and just starts wailing for no reason. And I, I just videotape it now. <laughs> I just yeah. video this, this you. <laughs> I just this want you to see this later on as a fuck you. All right. That's what I want. <laughs> now she's in, she's in the, I don't even know what stage it would really be. She's, she's just in the like, Hey, I'm just like fucking walking around. Just like just having a good time. Like she just is. So she's a pretty, I mean, she's a pretty happy go lucky kid. I mean, we're, we're very lucky in that. I mean, I think we have a lot to do with that, but we're also very lucky that she just is. Yeah, she is. And I'm just happy. She's like healthy and, and cognitively okay. And like, doesn't have any issues. Yeah. She's the only thing is like, eh, it's poor. Like, Got all the hair in the back, slowly coming up front. I'm like, you got a lot of your dad's uh, issues back here. <laughs> Besides that, she's fine. Um, but she's dope, man. She's a, she's a, just a dope kid. And I like, I really look forward to to being a dad of of a little girl. Like, I I just I like that idea. It's um, I've always wanted a girl because um, I because the women in my family are very strong. And just seeing her grow up around that is going to be dope. Um, and then my wife is equally as strong as they are. So, um, I don't know. It's, um, it's a good thing. So she's, she's going to be kind of like a little bit of a weird kid, right? Like you had an artist mom, a fucking tech dad. You're, you're half black, half white being raised by. Uh, a half white, half Indian woman and a black man who's also, she's also tied to her Indian culture. She has an Indian name, right? Um, her, her first name is an Indian name. Um, 
so, but she she has family in Singapore and in India and eats dal and curries and like like black people are gonna meet her later and be like, what the fuck is going on with you? Like, like she's 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 really you know she's really tied to that culture too, like just as much as her black culture. So that that is very interesting, even though like genetically she's not Indian. So um, yeah, it, it's it's dope. It's, su- it's super dope. So I don't know. Um, I don't think I'd want the story to play out any other kind of way. I, I, I think it makes her it makes her who she is, and I think it made us who we are. Right? Like it's super yeah, affected I mean, us in very specific ways. Yeah, people people do all that hypothetical stuff, but you know, if you do that, there would be no, you wouldn't be where you are now, right? And and I wouldn't change anything now. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so done now. Trust anything. me. In it, I was like, I wish it was totally different. <laughs> no, sure. Right. Sure. But now that we're through it, no, I wouldn't have it any other way. Because there, there are bonds that between my wife and I that just simply cannot be broken because of the shit that we went through. Like, you right. just can't. And again, you see your partner in a different light. Like, I mean, you see your wife in a different light when they become, you know, uh, a mom, right? Um, yeah. It's just... You just do. And when you see, when you see your wife fight, like truly fighting, um, like, I don't know. It's like it, it's, it, it's just different. And you, you respect them in a different way. Like you really do. Um, yeah. So there you go. There's there a, there's go, a, folks. What's that? So I said, there you go, folks. That's the, that's the story of my daughter, Aruna. Um, so she's, um, yeah, she's, what the fuck month is it? I don't even know. It's July. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she's like, July. yeah, she's 13 she's months like old. 11, 12, 13 months. Yeah. She's 13 months old. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's 18 months. They're five months apart. God damn. He's almost two. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And he's acting like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm, I mean, not super excited to be there, but it's fine. It's, it's not. It's not bad. You just can't. You, you know. You just deal. You get frustrated. That's all. Yeah, I'm pretty good because uh, I get I get pretty angry about a lot of things. She never makes me angry, which yeah. is interesting. Oh, you mad? All right, all right. Like, lay down, roll around for a minute. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. drink, like, drink some water and go lay down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody, some somebody compared it to like being mad at a cat. Like, what's you know the point? I mean? like, right. Like, <laughs> get over it. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. I'll be, you know, I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Like, don't worry about right. it. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So that is, that is the story. So, um, not exactly the normal, um, dad talk conversation, but, uh, certainly an interesting one to be, uh, uh, to talk about. There you go, folks. All right. All right. So, uh, I assume that's just slightly crazier or slightly less crazy than Fatal Affair that we will uh, that we will record uh, next week. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. See ya. Bye. You're watching the Black on Black Cinema YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our full reviews of black movies past and present. And every other week we do a preview episode where we talk about a random topic that affects the black community.